right now, what is Jerry Lawler doing sitting there at the desk that is usually occupied by Dave Brown? Uh, I'm asking myself the same question right now, but I can guarantee you one thing. Uh, Dave is, uh, is out on vacation. This is his last week that he'll be gone. He will be back next week, and I can assure you after he sees my performance out here, he may come back before next week. But anyway, we're going to try to do the best we can sitting in today for Dave Brown. And I have along with me a very close personal friend of mine and an employee, of course, of uh, Channel 5 TV, Mr. Bob McClain. How about a big round of applause for Bob? Thank you. Bob is here with us today. All right. All right. Thank you, Jerry. Great to be with you. Uh, you know, we uh, have been friends for, geez, I guess, uh, 15 or 20 years Hey, or so. hey, wait a minute. Don't tell them how long. <laughs> we met, of course, when we were in kindergarten. And, <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, uh, but this is the first time that we've had to work together, and it's great to be here with you. I'm looking forward to it. This is my first Me opportunity too. ever to be behind this desk that has usually been occupied by Lance Russell and Dave Brown and a few others, and so we're going to see what we can do today. And there are going to be some great matches. Tell us about some of the matches we're going to see today. Sure, Will, Jerry. We do have some great matches for you coming up this afternoon. Uh, we've got the Blackbirds, uh, Lou Fabio and uh, Rick Morton, they're going to be going against All each right. other. That should be a great match. That's one that uh, a lot of people have been wanting to see. Uh, a little bit later on, also, uh, we're going to be uh, hearing from uh, Dutch Mantell. Uh, I was talking to Dutch a little bit earlier. Well, see, yeah, just... <laughs> What they can still I remember Dirty Dutch Mantel. Yeah, just the mere mention of his name, you know, uh, immediately causes a reaction. But, Bob, uh, you know, the big, ma the big match of the day that we want to mention, without any further ado, uh, it's, it's not often that you have a, a, title, a title match, match. here on television, right. but the CWA Heavyweight Championship that is held by Black Bart That's is going right. to be on the line today with none other than Dustin, Dustin Rhodes, Rhodes is going to be taking well, You're going to see that title match right here today live on TV. That's also right. a big six-man tag later on in the evening. It's going to be a great show. show. It's going to be big. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back with it in just a minute. Stay with me. Here along with Bob McClain, and uh, we're getting ready for a big... Uh, well, a lot of big action. We already have Ricky Morton, Lou Fabiano. This That's is right. something That's I've been looking forward to, this ringing this bell. That's yes. going to be a... Hey, hey, hey look who's here. Eddie Marlin with us. Yeah. I, I love this. I get to do interviews and all this stuff. <laughs> Eddie Marlin's here. What, what, Eddie? I've got a little problem. I appreciate you coming out and co-hosting the show while Dave's gone, on vacation. And I think you've done a heck of a job. Oh, why do I have a feeling he's going about to say, but? Yeah, well, yeah, what, what? But half the wrestlers back in the back refuse to come out and wrestle while you're sitting out here. Oh. So they have to wash their hands. Like, like who, I guess Ronnie Gossett or somebody like that? Well, just about half of the wrestlers are here. I told him. I told the wrestlers that you would be Jerry Lawler, the TV announcer and commentator today, you wouldn't be Jerry Lawler, the wrestler, but they said me telling them is not like the real thing happening. So if you would, if you promise the guys that you'll sit here and not interfere, regardless of what happens, we might can get by with it. Okay, all right. Uh, now, this is something that you and I talked about before the show. Uh, uh, let, me, let me make this clear, and I told you that I would agree to that. Uh, as far as this uh, next... Uh, as far as the show last today, as you said, I won't be Jerry Lawler the wrestler. I'll be Jerry Lawler the show host. I won't. No matter what goes on over there, I'm not to get involved. That, hey, that's fine with me. And Eddie, behind this desk, I've known Jerry long enough that I think that I can attest to the fact that he's very capable of separating himself from what goes on in the ring and what goes on out here. So if you don't mind, let let, let Jerry. Jerry's doing a great job. I told doing the wrestlers, if you'll tell them, then I'm sure I'll be able to get them out here. I'm telling you right now, I'll stay behind the desk no matter what takes place out here. I don't. Let me. I don't think there's. I want to ring this bell. Is what I want. I wonder to. who's really behind it. All right. All right. Get them out here. I gotta wonder, Jerry, who's really behind that kind of. Uh, well, I'm sure guys, that kind of probably, allegation. probably just guys like this that are fixing to come out here. The Blackbirds. Uh, I Ice suspect Man, you're right. Carson, uh, of course, Rick Hunter and their manager, Harold Harris. These are the kind of guys who don't want to be uh, too close to anybody. Well, that's true enough. And, uh, and very few want to be close to them as well. Yeah. And then, uh, you hear the reaction from the crowd yeah, as uh, the Blackbirds come in talking it up and immediately proceed to give uh, my co-host here on the show, Jerry Lawler, a bad time. Jerry, I don't know why. I mean, you've been as impartial and unbiased as any announcer that I've ever seen. I can't. I don't think these guys have any legitimate room for complaint. Well, you know, I, I'm not saying that I wouldn't like to jump up and put a fist up beside a few of those heads. <laughs> but as as far as today goes, I've told, I've promised Eddie Marlin 
that I will not get involved no matter what happens. Well, so, now, uh, I'm now just going to sit here with you today. Hey, That's first match, enough. how about the introductions there? Okay, it sounds good. Now, the Blackbirds have already uh, managed to... Uh, to uh, concentrate their attention and shift it from Jerry Lawler. Here we go, the Blackbirds taking on Lou Fabiano and Rick Morton. And it's Rick out first. You know, Bob, Rick Morton, uh, of course, has made a name for himself, uh, and not just here in the Mid-South area, but all over the wrestling world as being one half, uh, along with Robert Gibson, of the, uh, I guess, one of the most, oh. most famous tag teams of all time, the Rock and Roll Express. Absolutely. And he still carries on that tradition. Oh, he comes out flying. Now, Morton says, I don't think the Blackbirds want any of that. Do I don't, I, it doesn't look that way. Uh, Rick is, is issuing a challenge to him from uh, the center of the, of the ring and saying, hey, come on, you guys. And uh, they don't seem to be too responsive well, at this point, Well, you know what's Jerry. real interesting about this is the fact that the Blackbirds have said that they want to prove that they're the greatest tag team. They wanted to get a hold of Ricky Morton because he was part of the Rock and Roll Express sure. and show him what they could do. Matter of fact, I think we have some words from the Black Blackbirds. Let's listen to what these guys had to say. Well, now, boys, we seem to have a problem with a little nut by the name of Ricky Morton. <laughs> he can't seem to find a partner, you know. He's running around with his little ginger beer by the name of Jeff Jarrett, and he's found a widget from Australia, Bill Dundee. He can't seem to find a party. He had one, but he lost that one. He was indisposed of. Let me tell you something, Rick and Mort, you and your former tag team partner used to be the Rock and Roll Express. You got a lot of record sets, but let me tell you something right now. The Black Birds are breaking every rule around and breaking all the records. And we're going to break your body, too. Yeah. Tell him ice. All I got to tell you is this. You used to be tag team partners. Hell, you ain't even together no more. So what that tell you? Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. As far as I'm concerned, or should I say the Blackbird's concerned, you just like Hubba Bubba, not a speck of trouble. Have it from those guys. A lot of a lot of strong comments about Ricky Morton, the Rock and Roll Express. Well, of course, they've got a long way to go to back that up. You know, it's one thing to talk about it, it's quite another to do it. Lou Fabiano now again. Oh wow. Oh, he caught one there, Jerry. I think that Rick would like to have an opportunity to get back in. He's he's chomping at the bit over there. Well, Lou doesn't have an opportunity to get over to him. Brickhouse Brown with a couple of left jabs and then that big right hand. When they get an opponent down like this, I mean, you can just look at those guys. You can tell that they delight. I mean, they literally delight in keeping one man in at a time, and they love the look on Rick Morton's face right now because it's a look of frustration. They That's know right. he'd love to be in there helping his partner, but see? Uh, and a, here they go a, again. It's a tag, and then they keep the other man in. Oh, a big double clothesline. That's got to hurt. That's got to hurt. Lou is, Lou is having needs some to get problems. A tag, Whoa, all right, he got out of the way yeah, on that one. Yeah, he got a break. He, he managed to have enough of his wits about him still, but he was able to roll oh, out, and tag. now he's trying to crawl across. Oh, there. He's got Rick. He's got Rick Morton, and here comes Morton flying back into the ring against the Blackbirds, letting them fly and pounding them down. Now Ricky Morton is showing a little bit of what the Rock and Roll Express was all about. This is the kind of style. Oh, this, oh, you see oh. this little Harris guy? And now Rick is coming out of the ring and he's going after Harris, who grabbed Rick's ankle and pulled him down. And there's the bell. There's the bell as Rick goes flying oh, through. Oh, and the Blackbirds sucker punch him and then drop on top of him. And Rick is in some trouble now. Rick, what I'm talking about with these jerks like this Harold Harris, his manager, first he trips the guy. Now it looks like he wants to take the cane to him. The Blackbirds holding him off. Harris, oh, comes off the ropes and lets him have it with the cane. It looks like he got Rick. I don't know, did he get him in the chest or did he get him in the throat, Jerry? If he... Well, I'm sure he went right for the throat. That's the kind of oh. jerk this guy is. There's a double headbutt by the Blackbirds. And oh, right, here comes some help. All right. Jeff Jarrett leaps into the fray. And not a moment too soon as Rick Morton's partner, Lou Fabiano, was still down and hurt. Rick, uh, he grabs the chair. Rick, I think, uh, had intended as the destination for that chair. The flight path would have been towards Harris, I believe. Ricky, that's the kind of jerks they are when it's two or three on one. Let me say what they, Jay. You know, somebody told me about all the things they said about Rick Morton when I was in the ring. Now I said that I had no partner, that I have nothing. But let me tell you one thing, 
Rock and roll is forever. And Harold Harris, I don't care what it takes, brother. Sooner or later, and it's going to be much sooner or later, I'm going to get my hands on you, jerk. All right, okay. Rick Morton obviously very upset at the interference from the Blackbirds uh, manager, and, and, you, and you can certainly understand why. Nobody likes to be sucker punched, especially no. with a cane. Well, that's exactly right. That's why I say, you know, the sooner we can do away with jerks like uh, Harold Harris and Ronnie P. Gossett, the better off we'll all be as far as wrestling goes. Hey, let's take a break. The winner is that, Lou Fabiano and Ricky Morton, and we'll be back with more right after this. <laughs> Wednesday night, 7.30, Riverside Downs, six big matches. You're going to see the Master Payne going against Plowboy Frazier, the Battle of the Brutes, the Wild Side against Doug Gilbert and Headbanger Ed. Then Freddy will go against the Zombie with Roddy P. Guys at the fourth. The Superstar Bill Dundee and Dustin Rhodes against Black Bart and the Dirty White Boy. Then a grudge tag team battle for the Kentucky State Tag Team titles. The Blackbirds with Harris facing the Rock and Roll Express. Then the main event, unified world title match, Jerry the King Lauder against Bam Bam Bigelow with Roddy P. Gossett IV. Let me tell you something, Plowboy Frazier, Boxcar Willie, me and the Master of Pain, we derail big freight cars. And Jerry Lawler, you're not the only magician of the wrestling business that can come up with tricks. I have dug up a big surprise for you, Freaky Freddy, with my zombie. And the main event, my man, the big Bam Bammer Bigelow, will take that belt away from you, Lawler, in a heartbeat. Listen to what Mr. Bigelow had to say. So now, I'm asking you, Jerry, the King Lawler, I want one more shot, Lawler, at that title. I want you to put your title up. I don't want no referees. I don't want no DQ, no disqualification, no whatever. It doesn't matter because I don't need rules. I don't need regulations. If Jerry Lawler, you say Bam Bam Bigelow's the toughest opponent you ever faced. That's the only time you've ever told the truth. He's going to take that world title away from you in Henderson, Kentucky, and you can take it to the bank. I'm sure the jury, the King Lawler, have plenty to say about that. That's Wednesday night, Riverside Down, 7.30 p.m., six big matches, and believe me, they are all main events. We'll see you there Wednesday night. Well, we're going to see if we can get the master of pain in here right now, and after his... Uh Encounters with Dutch Mantel. I past, understand that yeah. he's in a pretty foul mood. Now look who's come strolling into the uh, studio now. There is the master of pain, snatching off his headband and going right after Freezer Thompson. Bill hadn't even run yet. There it goes. And already, well, I think that's my fault, Bob. He was saying, "Ring it," and I just. <laughs> oh my oh, gosh! Wow! He ran his head. Right into that map. Master Tell you what, if we can, we had some words from the Master of Pain. Let's hear what he's got to say about the situation with Dutch Mantel. Okay. We'll do that in just one second, Jerry. We've got that tape coming up. Look out. Freezer. Oh, oh in big trouble. Gosh, a big suplex. And that Freezer Thompson goes close to 400 pounds. Master of Pain lifts him up like he's a feather there. Well, he Tell you what, oh. now we'll listen to Dutch Mantel. Uh, we'll listen to the Master of Pain talking about Dutch Mantel. Dutch Mantel, you're an even bigger moron than I can imagine. No time limit, no disqualification. You imbecile, that's this man's type of match. Do you realize what he spent four years in the federal, federal prison for? Exactly what you're going to get. They can't stop the match. There's got to be a winner. This is our match. Tell them, Payne. You know, Mantel, you're stupider than what I gave you credit for. Four years, brother. That's everyday life for me, man. You know, you were going around, you were telling everybody I wrote the book on how to be dirty. Yeah. Well, brother, they don't send you to prison for four years for being a Boy Scout, man. Hey, no time limit, no rules. Face him up tight. Goes. Yes, brother, that's my kind of match, and you won't come out walking. That's exactly right. Well, there you see. Now, here's Ronnie P. Gossett out here, just like the situation with Harold Harris. Uh, Jerry, I don't know if uh, the folks had an opportunity to see the, uh, the part of the screen on the center there, but while that interview was going on, Ronnie P. Gossett came over, grabbed Freezer Thompson, who'd been thrown out by the Master of Pain, and sucker punched him while he was out of the ring. Yeah, I see it, yeah. Gossett. Uh-huh. 
But see, they, they may be in, they may be biting off more than they can chew. When the, now, what's Gossip going to do? Wait a minute he's, here. He's climbing through the ropes and getting into the ring. He may be biting off more than he's chewing well, here. But maybe he's trying to stop. Well, I think he feels like he's trying to pull a guy off of him. Yeah, that's uh, that's a first in and of itself. Uh, wait a oh, wait a second. Gossip's going to help. I don't like the looks of this. There. No, I don't like the looks of this. Oh, he's just going to hold him. Now the master of pain is climbing up to the top. Jerry Lawler is ringing the bell, trying to get him to stop. The master of pain sees that uh, he's got uh, a little, a little more to contend oh, with here than he bargained for. You heard the uh, supersonic crack of the bullwhip as he get steps out through the air, that. and here comes Dutch Mantel, who is going to be talking with Jerry right now. Uh, you're doing a great job out here, Jerry. I, I can't imagine anybody that don't want you out here. If they don't want you out here, I imagine they can pack their bags and just get on down the road. That's right. That's what I'd say. But let me tell you one thing, Payne. How much time he spent in prison? He said four years. I think so. I should get 15 for letting him in the business. That's what I ought to get. But let me tell you one thing, Payne. You run around with that big, fat gossip. You got to roll him everywhere, and you got to feed him, and you got to tell him. And I know, I know it's telling on your nerves. And I've said it once, and I'm going to say it again. This town right here, it ain't big enough for all three of us, and somebody's going to have to move over. Now, I've moved over a lot of time, but Payne, you're going to be doing some moving. Now, Gossett, you're going to be doing some moving. No time limit, no DQ, must be a winner, no stopping the match. And if that ain't pretty well cut and dried, I don't know what is. But Payne, I'm going to be looking you right in your eyes, and I want you to be looking me right in my eyes, and we're going to see who the best man is. And like I said, can the teacher beat the student? And you got lucky one time, but Payne, luck runs out real, real quick. And you know that. I know that. You know that. All these people know that. And Payne, I'm going to say one thing. I got a real big surprise for you, and I'm going to let you see it firsthand the next time we step in the ring. Thank you very much. A Thank surprise? You. Hey, Dutch. Well, he mentioned a surprise, Jerry, but he, he walked off before he could give us any idea of what, what he was referring to. I don't know, but I can assure you, I know Dutch Mantell to, to, well enough to know that when he says he's got a surprise for Gossett and for the Master of Pain, it's something that those guys aren't going to enjoy. He's not a man to make idle threats, there's no question You about. know, Master of Pain and Gossett are talking about how rough and tough they are, but when you get a guy like Dutch in a match where there is no time limit, no disqualification, the referee can't stop the match for blood, no matter what takes place, mm -hmm. believe me, I think those guys, no matter how big they are, they bit off more than they can That's achieve. about as serious as it gets. You're not kidding. I'll tell you what, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back with more right after these words. Wednesday night, 7.30 p.m., Riverside Down, six big matches, all main events. The Master Payne, going against Plyboy Frazier. Battle of the Brutes, you'll see the Wild Side against Doug Gilbert and Headbanger Ed. Freddy going against the Zombie with Roddy P. Gossett. The Superstar, Bill Dundee, Dustin Rhodes against Black Bart and the Dirty White Boy. Then a grudge tag team battle. For the Kentucky State Tag Team titles, the Blackbirds with Harris against the Rock and Roll Express. Then the big main event, a unified world title match, Jerry the King Lawler going against Bam Bam Bigelow with Ronnie P. Gossett the fourth. Freddie, you've been a thorn in my side. You've been running around trying to give me a heart attack, and I'm going to show you that you and Lawler are not the only magician with a bag of tricks. I dug up an old friend, and I'm going to show him to you, Lawler. And Freddie, no, I'll wait. I'm going to bring this thing down to ringside, and when I open it up, you ain't going to like what gets out. Don't miss this all-star card, Riverside Down, 7.30, that's this Wednesday night. Maybe uh, rubbing your eyes and wondering what the heck is going on there. <laughs> of course, I'm Jerry Lawler, and we're sitting in today, but, and next to me is Bob McClain. We're that's here today Jerry. because Dave Brown is on vacation. He will that's be back right. next week, and uh, thanks so for inviting me. Uh, great to be here on the show today to join all these great folks in the studio with us. And uh, I, I, picked, uh, I picked a great day to come, a day with a uh, CWA title match. Yes, yeah, it's going to be a big, big match coming up a little bit later on. Uh, but right now, we want to talk about a, uh, an incident that took place, or not an incident, a match that took place down in Memphis, Tennessee, the Mid-South Coliseum. Between, uh, you know, we talked about Dutch Mantel right. and uh, Master Payne being former partners. Well, it was a match between myself and a guy that I had just recently been partners with, uh -huh. and that was Bam Bam Bigelow. And I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if you ever pass a guy out on the street, it looks like he weighs about 400 pounds, and he's got a bald head with tattoos on it, 
believe me, don't mess with this guy, because he'll kill you until the good Lord you died. Believe me, I'm telling you, this guy is a monster. Uh, now, I want to thank whoever edited this film, because it, it really makes it look like I, I had a little bit of the upper hand occasionally. But when I was in the match, I didn't feel like I had the upper hand any at all. But we're going to show you some highlights of, uh, of a match between myself and Bam Bam. And as I said before, people have asked me, what's your toughest match? Who's been your toughest opponent? You're fixing to see it right now. So this was in Memphis, Tennessee at the Mid-South Coliseum. Take a look at this. Lawler right now getting the beating of his life. What an awesome right hand at Bigelow. Now we're out again. Here comes Bigelow. Hammers Lawler on the ring apron again. Throws a bell out of the way. He's getting the table. Bigelow picked her table up. Lifted it like he did away anything. Hammers Lawler head first right on top of the table. Now he grabs Lawler. right into the table. Everybody out of the ring of the concrete. Bigelow now rams in the table. Almost demolished. Lawler quickly reverses it on Bigelow. Rip, reaches out for the chair. Lawler's got a chair now. Grabs Bigelow, rolls him in. Finally, we're back. Lawler now said payback time. But look at this guy, Bigelow. I know it doesn't faze me. A left from a well, Bigelow's eye cut now. Now we're even. Too big Listen, here's the strap. Down goes the strap. Look at these two guys go. Look at Lawler come back. Bam! Down goes Bigelow. Bam! Lawler grabbing Bigelow. I don't know if that was a tooth or what. Lawler really got him good. Sliding across with a drop kick. He rams Bigelow right in that steel rail fence. Here we come. Lawler up in the ch chain fence. Now here comes Bigelow and Lawler again. Lawler over the top out on the concrete floor. Unbelievable. Ring it. Ring the bell. The ref. I want to tell you, and it went on and on after that. And, well, you uh, said the match started in the Coliseum uh, in Memphis. I think it ended up towards Dyersburg. It yeah, like, it, 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 went, it went a long time and a, and a long way. And, and when I watch that back, I'm amazed that I'm here today. But uh, as I said, Bam Bam Bigelow, uh, toughest man that I've ever been in the ring against. Well, I can assure you that. I can certainly understand why. I mean, you busted the bottom out of the chair. Uh, <laughs> that table lifted up. What's that, what's that table weigh? Al, uh, it has to weigh like, a couple of hundred pounds. He lifted it up like it's feather. I mean, Holy and uh, you know, here I weigh 234 pounds. Some of the things that they w that weren't seen in the match, I mean, he just, he would literally pick me up like a feather and throw me around the ring. It's, 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 it's amazing. It is. It, it, you're right. That's the word, scary. <laughs> I'll tell you what, uh, let's, let's take a real quick break. Okay. And we'll be back with more right after this. That Stay title with. match coming up.
Okay. Ready for this. Maybe we have the distractions out of the way now. We got Perez out of here. We got uh, Ronnie Gossett out of here, at least for the moment. And we, we can proceed Dustin with Rose the business. In here. That's right. That's right. There's Boy, the big guy right there. That, uh, this, this is a young man that, uh, of course, everybody knows his father, Dusty Rhodes. Right. And, hey, hey whoa. Fair Lord, I want you to eyewitness the stomping that this snot nosed punk is fixing to take. He tried to act like his daddy. He tried to walk like his daddy. I'm going to whoop him just like I whooped his daddy. He will not leave this building with this belt. And it ain't a dead gum thing you can do about it. Or him. Okay, well, we're about to see if Black Bart can uh, back up his words. Now you see what the announcers <laughs> have to contend with, well, Jerry. Well, it's not an easy job, is it? Well, there are there are moments that make it worthwhile, but uh, dealing with the likes of Black Bart and Ronnie that, Gossett uh, let's are get not that brand in iron out of there, Gossett. Yeah, I notice that Gossett's keeping it handy. Well, here it is. The belt's at stake. Nothing Dustin Rhodes would like better than to be able to... Here we go, and there's the belt for the CWA yeah, the title match. match. And win that coveted Southern heavyweight title right there. Fighting for an advantage. Not obvious yet. I bet you freeloaders go down. Now Bart puts him into the ropes. Misses. Dustin Rhodes right back and slams him right down. Now. Oh, got a one count out of it. I'll tell you what, this black Bart, ordinarily when he's in the ring, the guys he's going against, he's got a big size and weight advantage. But if you'll take a look, I believe Dustin Rhodes is an inch or two taller than Black Bart. I think you're right, Jerry. I believe he's not only taller, but uh, the weight that he has, I suspect, is uh, better distributed, too. Yeah. Black Bart's trying to get him into a little test of strength, and, and I think uh, Dustin Rhodes is thinking better of it. Whoa, watch it there. Ow! He right, a big patented elbow. Right back with the elbow on the crown of the skull. Ref steps in. It's okay. See, there's a, there's a few things going through the mind of Black Bart. Not only does he not want to lose that title, he doesn't even want to look bad at any point in the match during a guy like Dustin Rhodes because he just, he looks on Dustin Rhodes with total contempt. He doesn't, I mean, you know, he, he hated his father. Right. And uh, he doesn't think that Dustin probably even has a place in the same ring with him. Yeah, there's no question that uh, it is personal to him. Yeah, absolutely. Whoa, there he nice went. Nice move. Oh, Dustin that. comes back with a flying drop kick and takes him down again. Two in a row goes for the pin. One. Ah, uh, Black Bart rolled out. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> Watch your language, Blue Bart. Blue language there, yeah. Uh, Dustin's going to have to weaken a guy like Black Bart down quite a bit more than a couple of drop kicks to get a pin on him. But he, uh, he, he's got a 30-minute time limit on this match. He could do it. Looks like Dustin caught one in the eye there. Uh-oh. A warning from the referee. Ooh, right into the turnbuckle. Now Gossett's happy. I see whenever Black Bart is, has the upper hand, see that sadistic little smile on Gossett's face. Oh, wow. My goodness. He almost took his head off with that close he, line. Yeah, he close lined him good. Justin is trying to get his wits back about him. And here comes Bart, ready to unload on him again. The thing about one of those clotheslines is, oh, and there, oh, dropping right across that top rope. Oh. Not only do you get the blast from when a guy from the guy's forearm as he as he collars you right around the neck there, right. but the next thing that happens is the back of your head bounces off that mat, and uh, it's just like a it's just like a one-two whammy, and boy, you're nearly out. Yeah, you talk about a whiplash. Yeah. There's a crowd behind Dustin trying to get him into it. Got him by the hair. Ooh, wee, those big broad arms, that's like 300 pounds coming down right across your chest. Gossip, why don't you sit down somewhere? He's got a very limited vocabulary. Yeah. Earlier he called me a 10 cent announcer, now he calls you a 10 cent commentator. Yeah. He's, uh, got a, he's got a, he's one of those guys with a million dollar body and a 10 cent my, brain. <laughs> the only way Gossip will ever be worth anything is if they start selling people by the pound. Well, you know, if you could buy Gossett for what he yeah. thinks he's worth and sell him for what he's really worth, you'd lose a lot of money. Oh, I believe he's got him. Come oh, on, he got out he, of that. Did he step out? He got that shoulder up. But Black Bart still has control. I love to see the look on a guy's face like Bart's when he thinks he's got the match in hand, mm -hmm. and then at that last second, a guy kicks out. Oh, right through the, right through the top rope. Sit down, Gossett. Here comes that jerk Gossett again. 
Black Bart. Watch yourself here. Got That's up. Oh! Right over top of our announce table. And Dustin is going to have to try and collect himself. And here comes Bart again, grabbing him by the hair. Look out. Well, Jerry, I guess they, uh, they, they did a pretty good job of demolishing our announce position here. With a drop. I hope he kicked his teeth out. Bart hits the deck hard. Come on. Into the ropes and oh. there's the elbow. Yeah, look at the look on Gossett's face now. He's uh, he's not too pleased with this oh, turn of events. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. Oh. He blasted him right in the referee. Oh. Hey, Gossett, put the branding uh, iron down. Gossett's got the branding iron and hands it into Black Bart while the ref is down. He's hurt. Dustin rolls away from that just in time, but here comes Bart again with a branding iron. All right, Dustin Rhodes has a branding iron. Oh, here's a switch. Come on, put it right across here's the a there. switch. Look out, there's Calhoun now. Uh, now the referee. Watch Dustin, uh, watch Dustin. What are you doing, Dustin? Hey, Bart's got Dustin, something in his hand. Look out. Calhoun uh, put powder, put powder in his face. Well, what can you say? You saw it. Now Gossett climbs into the ring. I'm surprised that uh, Gossett could get into the ring. It's only a 90-minute show. It's like it's going to get longer Calhoun, the powder in the face. Look he's, at that. He's trying to show Calhoun that, that Black Bart. Oh, yeah, yeah, what do you think happened? Yeah, okay. Right. And the evidence is obvious. It's Gossett down and he's trying to choke him. He's got him throttled. Yeah, right, yeah. is in there. Then Calhoun. Calhoun has been thrown out of the ring. This is just a melee. Oh my gosh, you got the brand out. Black yeah, Bart's got. Oh! Wow. Oh. Dustin Rhodes busted him right hit over the head with a branding iron. Now the dirty white boy is going to work him over a little bit. Gossett just looks on, and Black Bart gets ready to hit him another shot with a branding iron. Oh! Oh, man, they busted his head wide open with oh. a branding iron. He is really... Where is Calhoun? Jerry, is there somebody in the... Somebody that needs some help out here? Some, somebody... Is, here comes Bill Dundee. Come on, get it, get it, get it. He lets Gossett have it. Dustin Rhodes is down and is uh, really, uh, he's, he's in bad shape. Here comes Black Bart with the branding iron. You got some good crowd that you sat over here and you kept your trap shut and kept your nose out of our business. That's Black Bart. White boy, I really got you. That'll be great. Because so there's still got a little bit of hair. Bill Dundee and Dustin Rhodes are history. Every time I step in the ring with I him. I wonder if his daddy would be proud of him right now. Take a good look. Well, him. yeah. Who well, would be proud of you? Yeah. What did you accomplish? You had to use a branding iron. It's obvious, uh, Jerry, that uh, Dustin is really shaken. He is having difficulty keeping his feet. His let's take a break. Let's, let's, well, yeah, let's take a break and see if we can get somebody else in here to help, to help Dustin out. We'll be right back. Wednesday night, 7.30 p.m., Riverside Downs. Six big matches are all main event matches. The Master Payne against Plowboy Frazier. The Battle of the Brutes, the Wild Side against Doug Gilbert and Headbanger Ed. Freddy going against the Zombie with Roddy P. Gods at the fourth. The, the Superstar Bill Dundee and Dustin Rhodes against Black Bart and the Dirty White Boy. As you see, Roger, with a Brandon Iron and two on one, Black Bart and Dirty White Boy is awful tough. Well, it'll be two this week, brother. You didn't take care of me like you wanted to. Superstar Billy Dundee and Dustin Rhodes are going to take care of you, Black Bart, Dirty White Boy, in Henderson, Kentucky.
then you're going to see a big grudge tag team battle for the Kentucky State Tag Team titles. The Blackbirds with Heralds against the Rock and Roll Express. It's been a long time since Rock and Roll. And Henderson, you know, my son, Robert Gibson, what we can do. You're the one that started, and we're going to be the one to finish it because your mouth is worth a check. I don't think you're behind King Cash, big boy. Then the big main event, Jerry the King Lawler, Bam Bam Bigelow with Gossett in a unified world title match. You know, Roger, I don't know exactly what uh, Ronnie P. Gossett said or what he did or what he is paying to Bam Bam Bigelow to get Bam Bam's mind to where it's at. But I do know that this Wednesday night at Riverside Downs, I'm going to be facing eyeball to eyeball a man that I was recently partners with. And a lot of people have asked me over the years, who's the toughest man you've ever been in the ring against? And I'll tell you right now, I'm not ashamed to say, it's Bam Bam Bigelow. He's the biggest, he's the strongest, and obviously he's the meanest. And as if that's not bad enough, now he's going to have this big fat jerk, Ronnie P. Gossett, in his corner. Well, let me just tell you right off the bat, Gossett, if you've got any intentions, any ideas whatsoever interfering in this match, I'll run my fist so far down your throat, they'll need a crane to pull it out, brother. And Bam Bam Bigelow, you're getting one shot and one shot only at this world title. You better make it good. Oh, uh, this been is a wild one, Henry. This, <laughs> I was going to say, this has been quite a morning and afternoon. And it's not over yet. We still have another big match coming up. That's right. We, we want everybody out there and everybody out here to watch real quick. We have a couple of words. You've heard him mentioned here, Headbanger Ed. Uh, Ed uh, Doug Gilbert mentioned him a little bit earlier. Let's take a look. We had a special interview. I don't know if anybody remembers this guy named Dennis Carluza from up in Philadelphia. He's an attorney we had some trouble with back during the, uh, uh, gosh, it's been a few months back. But anyway, here's an interview sent in by Headbanger Ed. Take a look at this. Okay. <laughs> music he's coming down to the south to do away with it i don't know about him coming up now uh, this is going to be something look at these names coming in here jeff jarrett yeah, Cole I guess Dundee, real proud of that, huh? freddie dutch mantel chris champion doug gilbert dirty white boy eight man tag team match Boy, this should be a good one i'll tell you what we want to waste any time let's get this bell rung get these guys ready to go here and here we go. Bill Dundee. Bill Dundee would like to get his hands on a dirty white boy right now. There is no question. Wait to do that. Keith Eric's squaring off with Dundee. Nice arm drag. Dundee telling him, go ahead and tag that dirty white boy in. Now, I, I think dirty white boy says he'll take a little bit of him. Let's well, this happens. ought to be interesting as uh, DWB gets in there against Dundee. Oh, here they and they flail away against each other. Dundee definitely taking control and now getting a little assistance. There's a slap as Dundee goes out and Dutch Mantell is in and now DWB turns it around on Dutch. Wow. Into the corner, but missed. Couldn't capitalize on that. Just stay out of this corner over this way, Dutch, is all you gotta remember to do. Yeah, this is not the uh, area that you want to get into. Wow, yeah. Jared comes in and takes control, and there's the tag. I think it caught Jared a little bit by surprise, but he recovers nicely. And now he tags Dundee, who comes in and takes over, and immediately assumes the same wrist lock. Oh, there's Freddy, the fans are calling for him. Whoa, he missed him. Oh, Freddy is... Gives 
Freddie some room service. Tell you what, you got to watch out about Freddie if he ever goes for that claw. You don't want to be anywhere around. There is no Big question. Backdrop. Wow. Here comes Dutch. Watch yourself here, Dutch. Poor Keith Eric is uh, being the victim of, wow, some quick double teaming over there. Oh, or maybe I should you. say quadruple teaming. Have they got him? Oh, they did. Wow. Dundee and uh, the Dirty White Boys still got a fall. to exchange words after the match was concluded. And, uh, meanwhile, over here in this corner, Jerry, the guys are uh, shrugging their eyes. Hey, we, didn't, we never even got a chance to get in there. Well, Chris Champion and Doug Gilbert, either one of them actually got in the ring. They, uh, they well, never had a chance to break a sweat. That's a good strategy by Jeff and Dutch and Bill and uh, Freddie. They keep their one man in there and work him over continuously until they can get a pin. There is no question that uh, they really laid into it. And I'll tell you. Okay, there's your winners, Freddie and uh, Bill Dundee, Jeff Jarrett, and Dutch Mantel. Let's take a break. We'll be back with more after this. Cosby Show. Bro, nobody wants to tag in when Freddie's in there. Uh, yeah, and I can't blame them. Oh, oh, he's oh. after the referee. That'd cost him a disqualification if he's not careful. Uh, Dundee tells Freddie, hey, just back off a little bit here now. And get carried he away. He can't find anybody that'll give him a hand when he's in there with Freddie. You're going to have to go it alone there, Keith. Uh, champion, Gilbert, the dirty white boy. Nobody is uh, real oh. anxious. Well, okay. Whoa, Chris Champion, blindside. It's having very little effect on Freddie, looks like. Look out. Champion can't believe this. He's given Freddie his best shots and nothing's Whoa. happened. And he goes up over and out and uh, right into one of our cameras. Clear out. Oh, listen, now the dirty white boy's trying to trying to get a disqualification out of this. Uh, Freddie's saying, come on, come on. Uh, nobody, uh, nobody appears too anxious to get in there, Jerry. Champion can't find any takers for his champion. own teammates. He's had all he wants of him. Now the well, dirty white the dirty boy white is kind of forced in there again. Yeah. <laughs> he was left with very little choice. <laughs> A dirty white boy seems puzzled by what he's going to do against Freddy. All of his partners are hollering, go get him, go get him. But, uh, <laughs> Dirty White Boy would rather have some of Bill Dundee, I Look think. Look out, they're Look sneaking out. over the ropes now Whoa. and going for Freddie, but uh, they quickly changed their minds. Oh, now they're Here comes the Dirty White Boy from behind and blindsides Freddie into the ropes and... Oh, nothing. Freddie is just flailing away with right hands. At least he hasn't brought that claw out yet. Oh, I'll tell you, that's what you really got to watch from him. Dundee got a cover. He may have him. Nope. Dirty White Boy yeah. manages to kip out of it. Oh. Here's Dundee. A shot to the head and another. If you watch, every Dirty White Boy and Black Bar, they both tape their knuckles. And I wouldn't be... Wow, he walked right into that big foot. I wouldn't be surprised if these guys don't have a little more on there than tape. Yeah. Well, Here's the Dutchman. Considering the people you're talking about, we, we can hardly put it past them based on character, right? Exactly right. Wow. Nearly slammed him right through the floor there, didn't he? Dirty White Boy had a dazed expression on his face after that one. Still, has Doug Gilbert been in yet? I don't, I don't recall seeing him in there, Jerry. Well, they got him in the corner now, though. This is what you got to avoid when uh, you're they're working. Like this. They're working Dutch over. Trying to come Dundee. Out from the outside, but they're keeping him at bay. Here comes Freddie from, Freddy from Freddy the other Freddy. side. Whoa! He lets Champion have it. Dundee's working from the other side. This match is spilling out all over the ring. Get ready to go. I think we may have to uh, hit yeah. the ejection seats here in a second, Jerry. <laughs> There's Dutch going down oh, from the Dirty White Boy. Slam. That could be it. Here comes Dundee to assist. Now, order is restored for the moment. And there with a point of the elbow. Wow. He's got Dutch in bad trouble now. Up the leg across him. Dutch needs to get a tag. He needs it quick, too. This could be it. That's two. <laughs> now, here's Doug Gilbert. I believe this is the first time in the ring. I think you're right, Jerry. I haven't, he hasn't broken a sweat yet. Oh, he has a reversal from Dutch. Now, how's the striking? Come on, get around there. Oh, he's had 
him for more than what would have been a three count. And the dirty white boy had Calhoun's attention distracted. He was holding him, and he couldn't see it. Wow, now Dutch gets slammed, and Drums! Rock misses. All right. Oh, boy. Right on the hip. Dutch can't make a tag, though. Keep Eric in now. I'm sure that Eric would uh, Eric would like to get a few licks in for what happened to him earlier. You know that Keith Eric, he hadn't won many matches on TV, but brother, he's a gamer. He's in there struggling every time. This is the one guy it's easy to underestimate, but he is a good wrestler. Now Dutch tries to get over and get some assistance, and here comes Dundee, and he's going to unload on him. Down he goes. A lot of jabs. Uh-oh, watch it now. This could be a disqualification if Bill gets caught doing what I think he wants to do. Dundee wants to... I don't know what he's going to get him up there. I don't know what he's... Oh, right into Freddy. Yeah. There's a one-two punch Here comes you. Jeff. The tag on Jeff Jarrett. A double something coming up. Double backdrop. Oh, wow. Landed right on that point of that knee. That could injure him. Jeff looking for a suplex now. Jerry, you oh. got to feel sorry for Keith. He's taking the brunt of the punishment from this tag team, and his partners are standing around and saying, hey, good luck to you, buddy. Well, I'll tell you, just to be quite honest with you, I don't feel sorry for him. <laughs> but uh, what you say is exactly what's happening. His partners aren't really giving him a whole lot of help. Hey. Now Chris Champion wants in there. He may not be a sympathetic individual, but you got to feel sympathy for the position he's in. That's right. Ooh, we oh! for the big shoulder and Jeff moved out of the way. Put that shoulder right into the turnbuckle instead. Wow, big right hand by Bill Dundee. Got him back in the corner. Swings him all the way across and wow, that's the swing shot. Line Bill. That could be it. No, Bill kicks out of that. I thought he had him. That was close. They got two minutes left to go on the time limit here on this one. Oh, wow, they put the big boot right up in front of the turnbuckle there. Puts Bill's forehead right into it. And now the dirty white boy is going to come in there and uh, gang up the champion with him for a moment. Into the air he goes and down. The dirty white boy drops the elbow on him once, twice, three times in a row. Now he's looking take it out of here. Two count, Bill kicks out. Oh, man, Bill and them need a win if they want to put this thing away. And uh, Bill looks like he and them may need a win if they want to try to salvage a draw out of this situation. Oh, he's got that big size 12 right in his face. Got that heel, the boot right in his throat. Now, here's what they always have in mind. The referee gets distracted by one guy, and boy, they want to double yeah, they him. They turn right around here. and build him up. Watch yourself, Jerry. They're coming our way now. Now, here's Jarrett helping Dundee back to his feet. Now, these guys uh, change their minds once they see that Dundee has One some help. One minute left. One minute left to go in the action. Somebody needs to try to get a pin here. The dirty white boy drags Bill over. He may have him here. This could wind up in a draw. No, oh, he kicked out just at the last minute. Boy, I can't believe he found the energy. We're looking at 30 seconds left. Here comes Bill. Dundee he's going to tag. Oh, he's got the tag on the Freddy. They may be able to do something here. Freddy comes in and unloads up. Well, now it's just a, turned into a free-for-all, Jerry. Freddy is what he's having. Left to go here. Dundee has a dirty white boy oh, out through the ropes. Right out of the ring. All right. And follows him out. That's all the time. Time's up. That's it. The time has expired, and this match dissolves into a melee. We got to go. They say we're out of time. That's it. Hey, well, the action's still going on. We can't get them stopped. I'll tell you what. We'll see you back next week. Bob, thanks for being here with us. Thank you, Jerry. So long, everybody. Bye-bye, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of championship wrestling.